In the previous video, I introduced you to some basic tools that we use in economics. And I also showed how relationship between two variables can be represented on a two-dimensional diagram. Now, most of the times in economics, we use a straight line or what we examine is a linear relationship. We know that a line can be represented in this following manner, that is y equals a plus bx, where x and y are variables, and a and b are parameters that define this particular line. Now, whenever we write an equation like this in economics, you should remember we have direction of causality in mind, and the y variable will always be the dependent or the endogenous variable. And the x variable here, this will always be the independent or exogenous or autonomous variable. So whenever we write an equation like this, we have direction in, of causality in mind. That means x causes y and not the other way around. Then you have these constants a and b. Now look at this a. Suppose I plug in a value of x. What will happen? What will be left with is y equals a. Why? Because b times x, which is 0, will be 0. So y equals a. Also, a is the value of y when x equals 0. And this is what we call the intercept intercept. Now you have a coefficient associated with the independent variable and that is b. And what does b tell you? It tells you by how much does y change due to one unit change in x or in other words b is supposed to represent the slope of this line. And so when we write an equation like this, y equals a plus bx. We should know that we have direction of causality in mind. And then we know what a means and what b means. And let us plot this line onto a two-dimensional diagram. Now, let us draw this line, y equals a plus bx. We'll do it in parts. We know what a stands for. a is the value of y when x equals 0. So what we do is, whatever the value of a is, it could be 100, 200, or whatever, we go these those many spaces on the y-axis, and we plot a point here. And this plot point will give us the value of the intercept. And you know what intercept means, the value of y when x equals 0. Now, from here, the intercept, what we do is we draw a line like this one. And let me just bring it closer to this intercept. And the slope of this line will be B, will be B. So, so this is how we would plot or draw this line. We know the value of the intercept. We know the value of slope, which is b. And we can do that. Now, in the next slide, what we do is we look at an actual economics example where we use this equation of a line. Now, suppose c stands for consumption expenditure. And by consumption expenditure, we mean how much money is spent by one individual or a collection of individuals. And let I represent the income of this person or a collection of persons. And suppose somehow we know the relationship between consumption and income. And note the way we have written this equation, C is the dependent variable or endogenous variable. And I, just I, 
or income will be the independent or exogenous or autonomous variable. So what we have in mind when we write down an equation like this, that income causes changes in consumption spending or the amount of money we spend. And this should make sense. Whatever income we make, based on that, we go out and spend money. And it should not be the other way around. That is, first we go out and spend money, and then we try to earn that income. So for most people, almost everyone, we believe this is valid. And that is, based on the income, people go out and spend their money. Now look at this value 100. What is 100? It is the value of the intercept. And what does intercept mean? It means the value of consumption expenditure when income equals zero. And so this is what this number signifies. Now just think about this for a minute. When this person earns nothing, what is the minimum this person requires in order to survive? It is $100. So this $100 could be considered a minimum consumption expenditure or it could simply be called minimum subsistence expenditure. This is the minimum amount you require in order to survive. And so when your income is zero, this is what you'll need, the bare minimum in order to survive. And most of the welfare programs are based on this or even unemployment dole. And that is, what is this value of intercept? What is the bare minimum that people require when they earn nothing? They may be laid off or they cannot work. And all those programs are based on this value of intercept. Then you look at this number plus 0 0.75. Now, what does this number signify? What this number signifies is the slope, slope of this consumption line plus 0 0.75. And let me just edit this. And so, and we know that this coefficient associated with the independent variable is the value of slope. And what does slope tell us? By how much does consumption expenditure change when income changes by one unit, by one unit? It could be a dollar. <coughs> Now, when my income increases by $1, by how much does my consumption expenditure go up? It goes up by 75 cents. Note the slope turns out to be a positive number that simply reflects a positive relationship between income and consumption expenditure. And that simply means when income rises, consumption expenditure rises as well. And when income falls, consumption expenditure falls as well. So when my income increases by a dollar, by how much does my consumption expenditure go up? It goes up by 75 cents. Now, based on this equation, if my income goes up by $1,000, by how much will consumption expenditure increase for me? It'll be $750. How do we know that? It'll be 0.75 times change in income, which is $1,000. So this is what we try to do in economics, use a simple mathematical equation or a tool and apply it to economic issues. And you can see what kind of rich results we get. Now we have used the mathematical concept of slope and here are some rules that you should remember, and this will make life easier for you. Number one, the sign associated with the slope indicates the type of relationship. 
So if on your own you get a positive value of slope, what this indicates is a positive relationship. And what does positive relationship mean? It means as we increase value of one variable, the value of the other one will increase as well. If we decrease the value of one variable, the value of the other one will decrease as well. So sign associated with the slope indicates the type of relationship. The second thing you should know is for a straight line, the value of slope is a fixed number. For example, here is a line and suppose I ask you to find out the slope between these two points. Let me call them A and B. And then I also ask you to find out the slope between C and D. What you should remember is between any two points on a straight line, the value of slope will be a fixed number, whatever it may be. But if you are looking at a curve, the value of slope goes on changing, but that's something we'll consider later. The third rule you should remember is the following. Higher the absolute value of slope, steeper is the line or the curve. Now, when we use the term absolute value, what this means is the following. Suppose you are given a number like plus 5. You enclose this between two vertical lines, and these vertical lines indicate that we are looking at the absolute value. And the absolute value of plus 5 will be plus 5. Absolute value of negative 5 will again be plus 5. And so when we use the term absolute value, what this means is just ignore the sign and take that number as positive. And so higher the absolute value of the slope, steeper will be the line or the curve. Suppose you are given a line like this one. Let's call it A and a line like this one, line B. And what you know, what you can figure out by looking at this diagram is line B is flatter than line A. That means the absolute value of slope associated with line B must be smaller than absolute value of slope of line associated with A. So these are three basic rules that you should remember, and this makes life much easier for students. So this completes our basic lecture on the math tools required to understand economics. Thank you for your time.